Welcome to Ashland, the estate of American and Kentucky icon Henry Quay. Despite Quay's passing in 1852 and the estate's opening to the public nearly 100 years later, the museum remains one of Lexington's most famous attractions. Ashland, which Quay made in the image of the farm he grew up in, was passed on from the Quay family to the University of Kentucky and Transylvania University Colleges, back to the family, until it finally opened as a museum to the public in 1950. We spoke to curator Eric Brook, who agreed to give us a brief tour of some of the most famous rooms in the estate. So without further ado, let's head on inside. This is called the entrance hall. The entrance hall is where guests were welcome. So they would come to the front door, they might knock on that door. Uh, a, usually in, uh, in Henry's lifetime would have been an enslaved African-American servant, probably would have answered that door. Later on, those would have been employed people. They would have let the family know who was here and the family would have come down and greeted them here. So this was literally how you came into the home, and it was where your first impressions of the home were formed. The so dressing room is uh, the most formal room in the house. Typically when a guest came or guests came after being welcomed, they would be brought here to sit and converse, to be entertained. This was where guests were uh, treated here in the home. So uh, it would be akin to a modern formal living room, I suppose. Some of the fanciest furniture in the house. We ate and where guests were fed. I mean, a large part of the activity of the house would have been here in the dining room. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, a very formal, fancy room. Um, one that, like I say, a great deal of activity took place in. It's currently set for a relatively intimate meal. Um, we're interpreting it as the dinner at which Henry Clay learned his son Henry Jr. had been killed in the Mexican War. That was just him and a few family members, so it would have been a small, intimate affair as over having a whole table out, which sometimes we do in the holiday season. Okay. And this is sort of the flip side of the coin. This is a very private space. This is where we haven't interpreted as Henry Clay used it. And we know he had a space where he managed the farm, ran his legal practice, probably engaged in some political activity, but where he also got away from things. This was his private space. So we haven't very much interpreted that way. Um, one of the things that's neat about this room, and it's one of a couple that are, uh, this is the case, almost everything in this room belonged to Henry Clay. Um, some of the books, the furniture, um, some of the things on the walls, and most of what's in here was actually his and could have been in his study. So um, it's one of a few examples that way. We're very fortunate. We have probably 80% or something of the collection belonged to the family, and about 20% probably belonged to Henry Clay himself. And that's a pretty substantial percentage considering the changes in ownership, etc., that uh, occurred here at the house. So, what we call the Henry Clay bedroom. That's Henry Clay's bed. Um, and it, we, we talk about Henry Clay, the man, the human being. He was very much a human being, uh, like all human beings. You know, he certainly had his fine qualities, his noble qualities. He was a good person. But he also had his foibles, you know, his flaws, things that even he admitted were vices or such that they may not be the ideal things to do. Um, and so we talk about that here. We talk about habits like drinking, dueling, gambling, uh, things that he was criticized for. And so uh, we use the opportunity to be in a very personal space, to take a personal approach to who Henry Clay was. So I think that's a, a fun thing to do. It's a, there are a lot of neat stories that go with that. As Eric Brooks mentioned, Clay, of course, was human and therefore had his own vices such as drinking, but perhaps his greatest vice of all was slavery. His estate was in many ways a plantation, with the remains of which can be found all over, but especially here on the outside of the estate. Clay had a complicated history with slavery as he spoke of abolition and yet maintained slaves himself. This estate not only preserves the legacy of Henry Clay, but serves to remind Americans of darker aspects of Clay himself and America's history. Hopefully, after one's visit to Ashland, one will reflect over America's legacy and how its after effects can still be felt today.